Um, today I'm going to show you a quick video about how we can use this new awesome technology called ChatGPT to help us to learn how to do a lot of the things that I've showed you in other videos, namely run regressions, in more complicated and more advanced softwares like R. So today I'm going to show you how to do it in R. Um, namely how to run a simple and a multiple regression in R. In the future, I'll probably add a video about how to do it in Python. But this is really cool because coding, especially at the beginning, seems really hard to a lot of people. And this tool makes it so easy to start coding and very easy to do pretty complicated things and on really quickly. So I just wanted to introduce you guys to that because I think it'll be of value. And I use it all the time now for my data analysis um, because it is so much better than just trying to figure out code on your own. So I'm going to shut down my, fa my pretty face, unfortunately, so I can show you some of the tools we're going to be using today. So first I want to just show you this data set. This data set is weekly data. So this is the week ending date. Here I have the oil prompt. That's like the oil price today, like oil trading and or that week on average, how much oil barrels of oil we're trading for. Here is natural gas. So this is how much a natural gas is trading for. So the natural gas price is how you can think of that. Oil rigs is how many drilling rigs are out there in the United States at any given time drilling new oil wells. And this is the same thing for natural gas. And so we're going to use some of those variables in a simple first and then a multiple regression. We're going to use the oil price as our dependent variable um, just because that's how I've decided to show you guys how to do it. Now, so that's just the context of the data we're going to using. You can see how to run regressions with this data in some of my other videos. It's very simple in Excel. but Oftentimes, we want to move to a more advanced software like R, which is right here. So you can get R and R Studio, which is the user interface that I use when I'm doing R for free. And it's very simple. Just Google um, download R and R Studio, and those are free. The first time you open R, it'll look something like this. This is where we write commands in R. So you can do, this is just what's called the command line, and we could do command by command right there. What we're actually going to do is create basically a computer program. So what I did there is I clicked up here and I made a new R script, so it's untitled right here. If I save it, let's call it our chat GPT regression, which is what I'm going to show you guys today. So I'll just save it like that. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to have chat gpt which hopefully you've seen but if not you can just google chat gpt you have to do an account to start using it but it's free for this version there's more advanced versions that do cost money but for what we're going to do today namely writing code in r the free version is fine and so what we want to do is have chat gpt help us figure out how to run a regression using this data so the first thing we want to do, so I'm going to actually just close this because I don't really need it anymore. The first thing we're going to do is figure out how to bring data into R. Then we're going to use that data to run a regression. So ChatGPT is awesome. We can just go to this send a message line and say, show me how to import data from Excel and run a regression in R. And then we click this right here and wait for a second while it thinks about, all right, sure, here's a step by step. So it's telling us what it's going to do, and then it's actually going to show us the code. So right here, it says we're going to use a package called Read Excel. Basically, R has a bunch of preloaded packages, but sometimes when we want to new, do new things, there's like pre, what are called packages that are basically chunks of code that help us do stuff that people have already written for us. So I can just go to the top and let's just start here. Okay, this is says this is the packages that we need. So let's copy and paste that right here. And then so, oops, in, it says install packages, read Excel. So if I go to the end of this line 
and then I do run, it'll actually run that line of code. And you can see right here down on the command line, it ran that line of code. So it says trying URL. That's just what it looks like when it's actually installing a new package. I had that package before, so it really just updated. So it might just look a little bit different. It's good when you're writing code to comment on what it's doing. So install needed. So we'll say install and load needed packages. Because the first line here, install packages, installs the patch package we're going to use. But then we have to actually load it by using this library command. So library read Excel. Now once you have installed a package in your R, you don't need to do it again. So we can actually just comment out that line of code. It's nice to keep it there because then you can sort of remind yourself, well, what did I have to do to get this package? Because in the future, when you do different stuff, maybe you need different packages to help you. And this just shows you how to do that. We would just change the name of the package we were installing and we could install other packages. Library read Excel right here actually loads that package. It basically puts it into memory so we can now use it. Okay, so let's look down here what this says. This says import the Excel data. So now we're going to actually use a function function that exists in this package. So let's put a comment to ourselves. Import data from Excel. That's the next step that ChatGPT tells us that we should do. Again, we can just copy the code from right here. And when it says, notice that we didn't tell ChatGPT anything about our specific data set. So it's just saying, okay, in general, you could name it my data. Let's call it oil gas data because that's more consistent with what we know our data is going to be. And then that Excel file is not called mydata.xlsx. So one trick that's easy for me because I'm lazy is I'm going to go ahead and in our studio, you can just import data. And so I'm going to do import data set from Excel, browse so we can just find it on our computer. It's on my desktop and it is, I think I named it weekly oil gas regression. So maybe we can just find it here, weekly oil gas reg data. That's what I called it. So now I can just double click this and then I'll import it. And so what's nice about that, so like you can see it imported this data, it shows it to us. All of the, so R basically did this command down here for us when we use the drop down menu. So the only reason I did that is that I'm storing this in my Dropbox. I thought I put it on my desktop, but that doesn't, maybe this is an even better example because what happens is when you're storing it in different places on your computer, I hate trying to figure out how to type the file path to my data. All that I really did there is I would have had to figure out this path by myself. Like, okay, Dropbox backslash supply, or is that a forward slash? See, I don't even know. That's why I'm being lazy and using these things. I find the right path by doing it this way. I have too many um quotation marks there but i think we should be good to go now let's run it except r seems to be claiming there's a problem but there wasn't notice that it's showing up twice now i'm gonna actually just delete this out because the only real reason i did that is because i again i didn't want to have to figure out how to type this path out myself and if i import from our studio using the drop down menu it shows me the exact file path down here in the command that it runs. And so now that we're good to go. We are naming our data set in our oil gas data. Where does that come from? Well, we use the read Excel function that's in this library up here. And then we go find where that data is stored. And so again, ChatGPT showed us how to do it. We just had to make it more specific to what we're trying to do. So we can sort of look at the data and summarize it. But down here is where it shows us how to actually run a regression. So number four, run a regression. Number five is check your data. We already looked at an Excel. I'm pretty confident that it looks okay. So let's copy this over, paste it. Let's call it oil 
gas reg one, because we'll run a multiple regression too. This is actually showing us how to do a multiple regression, because we have y, our independent variable. x1 is the first independent, sorry, y is our dependent variable. x1 is our first independent variable, and x2 is our second independent variable. This says which data we should use to run the regression. So we actually want to get rid of that and use the data that we just created, oil, gas, data, right there. Let's comment to ourselves above this so we remember what's going on. This is going to run a simple regression. So that means there's only going to be one independent variable. So I'll get rid of the second independent variable. And now right here, what is y again? Okay, well remember we looked at the data set. That's going to be the oil price, which was called oil prompt in the data set, okay? And then for our first one, let's just use the natural gas price as our only independent variable, and that was called gas prompt. Notice that I could go to ChatGPT. If I didn't want to rewrite some of this, stuff, I could say, show the code for a simple regression with oil prompt as a dependent and gas prompt as independent. Oops, can't do enter, have to hit this little arrow. And so there's load the data, it's just showing us again my data. Read Excel, there's a simple regression. Notice that now it says oil prompt and gas prompt. So if you wanted, you can totally However you want to do it. If you prefer to be more specific in ChatGPT, it'll show you the more specific code. Um, so we could even say the data set is called oil gas data. And so you're basically, we're having a conversation with ChatGPT and it's just, so you can be more specific over here. So right there is basically line, the line of code. And we could even say, okay, now name the regression oil, gas, reg one. And it'll, then we would have been able to copy this exact code right here. So there's a lot of flexibility with whether you want to edit on this end or this end. And I encourage you to try both, see what you like. So let's run this regression. Okay, oil gas data dot found. Why did that happen? It's because I didn't run this line of code yet. So we go there. Okay, that worked. Now notice that oil gas data showed up in my environment. So now if I run this line of code, okay, cool. No red error. That means it worked. But as you guys know from my other video, it should show us slope coefficients and p-values to see whether it's um, statistically significant. Well, that's because we haven't copied this line from ChatGPT yet. This is what shows you the results. For us, it's not called my regression. It's called oil gas reg one. So we're going to get a summary of the results of the regression that we named oil gas reg one. That's what that's doing. I run that. Now, here we go. Okay, coefficients intercept as you guys know from previous videos we always have an intercept and a slope here's our intercept here's our slope so the equation is oil price equals 29.0172 plus 5.6148 times gas prompt or times natural gas price is it a statistically significant relationship yes this is a p-value and this p-value is super tiny so like basically zero. We can also see that, look at our T value, which again is the number of standard errors we landed away from the null hypothesis of no relationship. That's how far this away is in T values or standard errors. And so that's really far away, as you know from my previous videos. So look how quickly we were able to write a computer program that loads data in from Excel using this library, and then runs a simple regression on it. Now, if we want to do a multiple regression, ChatGPT really already showed us how to do that, so now let's do 
run multiple regression. Let's call this two. And now let's add our other two variables. So we had plus gas rigs plus oil rigs. Those were the names of my other two variables. If I forgot the names of my variables, I could click right here. There it is, oil prompt, gas prompt, oil rigs, gas rigs. So if you forget the names of them, you can just do that. Now we're gonna summarize that regression after we do it. We can highlight that whole chunk of code, run it, and then there we go. See, now we have three independent variables because I included three independent variables here. All three are very statistically significant, all positive relationships. And so you guys know how to interpret all of that information. But I mean, you can really go crazy with this thing. Doing R is pretty much better than doing Excel for a lot of reasons. In Excel, I think the limit is 16 independent variables. In R, the sky is the limit. How much data you have is basically the limit. We could ask ChatGPT things like, how can I make a scatter plot of this regression data with a line? Things like that. It'll show you code for that. So ggplot2, there's another library we'd want to use. And notice it's always importing, it's showing you all of the code again. So we can kind of go see, well, what have we already done? This is showing us how to do the scatter plot. You guys can play with that. You've seen from previous videos how to include categorical variables in the regression. And so you can get running with R so quickly by doing this. And it's been kind of before this point, it was like this very specialized knowledge of coding that people needed, years of training essentially. But now, look how fast we were able to do that. You did not have to know much. You do need to know the fundamental statistics because you do need to know, well, what does this output mean? Now we can ask ChatGPT to interpret things for us. So maybe even you might be able to say, interpret this R output for from a regression. I don't know how well, oh yeah. Summary of the regression results for a model that includes the oil rigs as an independent variable. Boom, I mean, that's pretty crazy. So you can even get the interpretation at the other end. So I just wanted to show you guys this because this is basically a magic wand we all have now where even if you were scared of coding in more advanced languages before, you can do it, the world is changing, the sky is the limit. Have fun with this, add more crazy stuff. I mean, you can imagine just going nuts thinking about all of this stuff I've showed you in other videos that takes tons of work in Excel. Um, yeah, so have fun. Bye-bye.